I learned 40 years to make this video here. Hello, hello, back again. Here we are in Cremona, Italy. I am a violin maker. Um, here we talk about the wolf tone, and this is not only for the cello players, but it's for everybody. Double bass, yeah, violin, viola. They all have problems with wolf tone. I get quite a lot of messages and, and they ask me if this is a good sign, a bad sign and why this stupid uh, wolf tone and everything. But on the other side everybody wants a great sounding instrument. Now, is it now a good sign or not? Let me explain you. If you have, let's say, a piece of metal, maybe we have a piece of metal somewhere, I have a piece of metal somewhere uh, because I make all my molds here out of this. Um, let's say here, uh, very good. What is this? Strat X large. Okay. See, ya? now it could be violin shape or whatever. Every piece in our world here, pieces of wood. Your, the door, everything is vibrating, okay? And uh, if it wouldn't be like this, then we would have difficulties. Now, a violin, certainly a viola, a double bass, a cello, of course, they all vibrate. Now, the, the kind of model is just the shape of the item which is vibrating. So, if now you have, let's say, a top, and the wolf tone is always working on the top wood, okay? You don't put a wolf tone killer on the back, you're always on the top. The top is the, the core, is the, the, uh, the pistons of our sound energy uh, machine called violin, viola, cello or double bass, okay? This is something, it seems like I'm crazy, but this is, you have to understand that there is the bridge and then there's the whole top which is vibrating, okay? Now it's all vibrating and now it's vibrating and vibrating and then yep, you put on the bass bar. So it still is vibrating, but different within and without, right? And there was certainly in the evolution of the, our instrument a certain difference of how the whole thing um, arrived to that point, how we know it today, but it's still changing, so it's all a nice good sign that we're still in the process of evolution and, and we're all happy that we're still in the evolution because we know it's not so perfect here. And so we want to make things better. Even this video will help to make life better for you. Now, next thing we put, before we put on the bridge, is the sound post inside, right? So right now it's vibrating in one way. Actually, in the beginning when the violin maker is working, he has the top like this and is, is, is investing a lot of time of what he's doing, right? Because he's used to work like this, me too, right? And then it's, he puts on the sound of the bass bar and I made videos about that and it's, it's not this easy, believe me, and then you need a metal ring and you fit the bass bar and the, the position is, is crucial for the sound and for the way it responds and, and where to put and the, the bridge size, and it's, it's really t complicated. But now we have the, the, the bass bar inside and it's vibrating already different. We put in the sound post and look all the seven videos about the sound post. Uh, it's like 5, 6, 21, 28, 29, 53 and, uh, and down 100 something. And now we have here the wolf tone, okay? And you put in the sound post and exactly the position you see in the previous videos and all this. And now property is even different. And then you take a bridge. The violin maker takes the best choice of bridge, he's choosing it and he's always using the best bridge. So where are all the bad bridges? We don't know. And then he fits the bridge feeds on the arching which is varnished already with lipstick and all kind of strange things. And until it is perfect, he's spreading the feeds on the cello and on a double bass fits it very well, string his and then he fits it and everything and then it's getting to be played. It sounds super great 
And then, oh damn, there is a wolf tone. And then the musician finds it on that tone and then it becomes like, I told already in previous videos, it's like driving a, the best car you can find. Laguna, I think, is the, the most expensive uh, limousine, right? It's from Aston Martin. It's a, it's a, uh, you drive that car and the window is slightly open and you hear all the time and the musician can't stick, cannot see the beauty anymore of all the rest of that instrument because there is the wolf tone. On a specific tone, then he's trying to search in a little bit in higher positions, in lower positions he discovers it's all over. Oh my god, it's a horror, you know? And you as the violin maker say, no, you know, what can I do now? And the questions of you is also, is it a good or a bad sign? Now, from the point of view of how the instrument sounds, it's actually the best you can have because it's a sign that it is vibrating. It is even vibrating more than other instruments which don't, who do not have a wolf tone, okay? And the wolf tone is nothing else than an interference between the tone you're playing and the area on the top which is vibrating exactly in that position. It's a little bit like you see on YouTube these hanging bridges which because of the wind is blowing are, are bop, bop, and then you see bridges like this for hours and hours before they smash down, right? Now you don't play on that single note that much before the cello is going to burst but actually it's something like this, a wolf tone. So just now get into the whole thing and try to see it as a positive thing. I don't say now you have to, to play now the wolf tone concert but once you see it and you understand it, what it is, you can also understand what you can do. And you can eliminate every wolf tone, okay? Now, the first, quickest, easiest uh, things to adjust it are moving the sound, the bridge, because as soon as you use, you, you're moving the bridge, on your instrument, if and so you, I usually I double check if the distance is perfect and all this kind of thing, and I also have videos there, so double check if your position of the bridge is perfect, okay? And if you move it a little bit uh, in one direction or in another, if it is better or worse, this is always good to know. And uh, this is good like this. And uh, position of the bridge is one thing. Length of the fingerboard is another thing which you can quickly do and it, the whole property of the whole instrument is somehow a little bit changing and also influences and very often you see that fingerboards are far too long than it should be On a cello should be 58 and very often I see cellos which have like 60 so it's a sign that still somebody in um, Madagascar or Cameroon or um, India decided for you how long your fingerboard is and it shouldn't be like that. 58, there was somebody who didn't take care of it. 58 is a traditional cello fingerboard on the Montagnana, it's even 56.7 I think. Um, on the original and I love to do it also this way and nobody complains that it's too short. And the next thing you can also adjust is this, the length of, this, of the tailpiece, this tailpiece gut. Now on a cello it's a little bit more difficult to adjust it and sometimes you just you do better just to change the entire tailpiece from a, let's say from a Wittner uh, to a Acousticus or from the Acousticus to the Wittner or to uh, something and it will change completely. But these are quick things you can just do and you just take the cello and get it done. Next step of, of um, wolf tone hunting and killing is that on that tailpiece the strings from the tailpiece to the bridge, you block the two ones in the middle with a clip 
there are some fancy things uh, like you, you, they have a, a dime in America welded on a metal thing and you can tick tick and then you see the strings like this. You can also buy these wolf tone killers which looks like a uh, explosive mine uh, with um, uh, springs and you, you put them over all four springs works also nice but once you understand what you actually are doing then you actually understand that you have to change something of the thicknesses of your cello on the belly on the top and probably the most efficient way to do that are these sound, cause, uh, sound um, uh, tone, uh, uh, wolf tone killers from uh, Resonators. Uh, I think it is a German company and I'll, I'll let me see where it comes from because I think this is the most best one, uh, uh, Wolf Resonator. This is not the advertising for them, it's just because it is so great uh, working. Hold on, I got just a great advice. That, uh, this one here, which usually you use on a, on a violin or a viola to make it silent. Sometimes, you know, this rubber thing here, but if you put it on the back side, very often you can see that this one works also already. If the wolf tone is uh, uh, small, now this one is a huge, super old one. It's torture or taught. Uh, I don't know, but this is just one. You can also find other ones. You can also find the ones which only for a single string, which is this one is very economic. It's just a metal piece and you just pull it on one string and then you have to find the right position of this one. It's all very uh, works, but it's actually not working in the right area. Okay, so, so once you have the right tone, this wolf tone killer is probably the best and I don't know who is the one who makes it. There is nothing written on it where it comes from but anyhow I, I just like it very much. There is some like play-doh or something inside. You can take it. It is a, a wooden piece with two springs and then there's a, a, a weight. So it is actually, here is also something, a small hole. Now you take this one and you take this, this um, Play-Doh, I don't know how you call it here. You put it on and then while you're playing from the outside you can check where the area is, okay? Before you do it, you just, when, when, the, when you're playing, you just uh, try to get it by touching and you, see, you can feel with the finger the area which is like the bridge, you know? And in that area you say, okay, I put it here. And then you know the tone and they sell it for different tones from D, E, S, F, and all tones. Once you know which tone it is, you buy it for that tone, you search the right position, you put it there, and it's like magic, it's gone. Once you know that, you have spent little, and then you can do it yourself or you go to a violin maker, which is probably the most reasonable thing because then he knows already, he has a clamp like this with his nail. He puts the hot glue on. I always like to do it with hot glue and not with white glue because you want also to be have it, have it reversible, right? And then you put this here on, you put the glue on, you go through the F hole, tuck, and then you just glue it inside. You don't see anything and you actually eliminated your wolf tone exactly in the point in the spot where it should be taken off. Okay? So, to repeat again, you certainly can also change your packs from ebony to boxwood and it would probably affect the wolf tone in that area. But you can also cut the fingerboards, find the right position, put the sound post in a different, make a bigger sound post and whatever you can do and larger feeds of your bridge and everything and change them. But the, the most efficient way is to eliminate it with a wolf tone killer which is 
glued inside, some people believe that the whole entire instrument doesn't sound anymore how it uh, was before, which I believe is not true, because in case you won't tell musicians, they would be very happy how the instrument sounds. And uh, this is all I have to say about wolf tones. It's already many years ago that I needed to put it on because usually I prefer to explain it and especially immediately made the instrument. I saw it so often that then actually it's a little bit disappearing over the first months when the instrument gets played. And I like to do things transparent, but since you probably have the sound post, either the sound adjustment expert tool, you also have the mirror so you can look inside if your instrument has a sound uh, uh, post killer inside or net. But it's not that it's now less worth your instrument or anything, okay? It's just a sign that your whole instrument sounds very well and you just have to know it and you have to work on it and get it eliminated in order that it's not on a tone where it's disturbing. And this is it all about with the wolf tone. I hope you like this video. You subscribed of course already and in case you did not that you do it right now because I, I just, there's no reason that you don't. You are playing and this is all stuff you need to know. The more you know, the better you will play, the better you will have an instrument in better conditions and you will make a live a more happy life. Believe me. Subscribe, tell your friends. See you next time. Ciao, ciao.